Key of the OG podcast. I'm your co-host Andy Kilcam, along with my other co-host OG Prosta. And today we're going to be talking about various topics, like as we always do. I don't think we really ever really have like one main topic that we talk about. I think that's one reason why I don't title the show and do a description and all that good stuff because I honestly don't always know what I'm going to talk about. Um, and I don't think we really do until the the actual beginning of the show, which I think makes it pretty awesome. Because um, we don't talk during the week at all, do we? Not really. Yeah, we, we don't really talk um, during the week. We don't talk. We only t- maybe talk about, like, what, three minutes before the episode? So, I mean, that's pretty much how we do things. We just do it on the fly. Um, yep. which I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you might want to um, get a little bit closer to the mic on your end because I was having a little bit of everybody was saying, "What? Why was OG so quiet last episode?" I'm like, "I don't know." They're like, "What? Where, where, where's the loud OG?" I'm like, "Okay, I'll, I'll let them know." They 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 want to hear your sexiness, man. Apparently. Um, apparently, there you go. I can hear you a lot better then. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with you, man. How was your week? How was your everything, man? How, how's life? Uh, my week has been pretty good. I, um, more or less have been watching a lot of SGDQ. So that's been kind of what I've been doing for the most part. Um, that's actually what I'm watching right now, believe it or not. Because nice. they're doing a speed run of Mega Man X6 right now, which everybody knows I'm a big Mega Man fan. So of course I'm going to watch those. Um, other than that, I've been going really, really hard on Duel Links lately. Um, they, they had another event, so it's a lot easier to get a lot of resources and stuff. Uh, it's actually the best time to play is whenever there's an event. Oh, and then, nice. of course, they've made some changes, which I'm going to be uh, talking about later on for some of the mobile gaming updates. Uh, it's kind of a big thing with Duel Links, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then I'm all, I've also been doing, you know, a lot of Seven Nights, and I've been going hard on Heroes Charge again, trying to prepare for the next video, because I'm probably going to make a couple of videos tomorrow nice. on YouTube. So those who watch my mobile gaming videos, uh, probably sometime tomorrow, mid-afternoon, I'll probably end up posting something before uh, I get too hard on to uh, SGDQ again. So I'll look forward to that. And... That's really been the most of it, you know? Oh, and then, of course, I did the role-playing thing on Saturday as well, like I always do uh, with that group, and it's going pretty good, too. We got a solid crew of people, and uh, I've been enjoying it a lot more than I would have assumed, so that's always a good thing. That's cool. So it's uh, that's actually going really well for you, then? Oh, yeah. I'm actually uh, actually having a lot of fun, so it's pretty um, cool. Just a curiosity, uh, is, is your woman in, uh, does your woman like that kind of thing? She used to be into it when she was a teenager, but she got out of it. Um, apparently, uh, the people she was playing with were kind of too, too, took the game too seriously, and they ruined it for her. Um, now, she's watched me and some of the guys do it before, and she loves the group that I'm with. She actually <coughs> she just likes to come with me and uh, watch us do our thing. So she actually likes watching us. Uh, she just doesn't really participate herself because of the experience she had, you know, a long time ago. Hmm. That's. Didn't you? Um, if I'm correct, didn't you do YouTube videos of it once, or you had a friend that did YouTube videos of? I mean, not of this group, yes. but of one group before. Yes. Uh, um, I didn't make the videos. There's actually a, another friend of mine who has his own channel. Um, he recorded us on a separate podcast. Uh, doing our own role playing thing. I don't remember what the title is because honestly, I haven't really listened to the majority. Yeah, of it. to be honest, um, it, it was a little hard listening to. The quality was not as um, well. It was hard for me. It wasn't it was bad, it was just hard to keep up. Um, yeah, it was. Like, if you don't know what's going on, and plus, we kind of had. Uh, the way that it was set up is he kind of had like a camera and on a tripod in a certain spot. So you could hear some people better than others because of the location of the device. So it was really weird. What's interesting too is uh, we actually have a friend in our current center again that wants to actually record what we're doing now. Um, 
the issue that he's having is he wants to do it at his place because we usually meet at a you know a gaming place but he right. actually wants to do it at his place but the problem is is we have uh, quite a big group and he's not comfortable fitting that many people you know in this little area so we're trying to figure that out because um, we can't do it at the gaming store we're at because there's a lot of background so it's gonna be a lot of interference so he he wants to do it but we're not 100 percent sure how we're gonna get that started but uh, well, I'll give you details if that actually becomes a thing. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be awesome to see. Um, you know, maybe we could. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we could somehow get the podcast involved somehow. Um, you know, you never know. It would be really cool to see, though. I'd be I'd be down to to check it out. Maybe. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm drinking a lot of Big Red tonight, so I might have a little bit of case of the burps. Big Uh-oh. Red Tim. Big Red tends to give me the burps. Um, so. I don't know why, but out of all the sodas, like it gives me like the most burps out of any soda to drink. Huh. It's really weird, right? It's really interesting, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, that's cool, man. I'm glad you're having fun and dealing with that and enjoying that. Um, my week has been pretty cool. I got a, I got a confession to make, and I'm going to confess it right now. I have not been able to watch anything of the fundraiser. I've been like busy um for those that don't know you know that i've i've changed bots from deep bot um mainly because like here here's my problem with deep bot right i don't like having to pay for a something that's in a beta stage monthly um it just doesn't make any sense to me um two and foremost the other reason why is the things that I want DeepBot for, um, or I would use DeepBot for, was if anytime somebody hosted the chat or anybody followed the stream or if anybody subscribed to the stream, um, they would automatically get high points. For those that don't know, high points is my currency in my stream. The more high points you are, I mean, the more awesome you are. Um, well, to have those to have those in the stream or to have those work, you have to pay for these features, which is five bucks a month. And half the time, these features wouldn't work because they something is always either updating. Twitch is always updating, or they're always doing something to the program. So therefore. Um, I'm always having to go in and, and either try to figure out how to do it myself or having to have somebody literally backdoor through an internet connection and yo, Rage Gamer, welcome to the Kill Cam Squad where we chill and we kill and we have no drama. Uh, thank you for that follow me. Yo, 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 what's up, DB? And so, and the only way I was, I was literally having to have, like, a fellow streamer, um, like, go in through my computer, which is TeamViewer, and having to have them, like, do the code for me. And don't get me wrong, I, I trust this person, or I wouldn't have had them do it in the, in, to begin with. But even though I trust this person, it was just still making me feel uncomfortable with the situation and it was happening a lot so i was just like you know what it's just not worth it and so i've been using stream elements and i get the same results everything that i want plus a lot more extra for free i don't have to pay the five bucks a month um and i don't have to worry about no code either so that's mainly what i've been doing i've been having to like write commands and and just get everything going with the bot or like write commands that I want for the chat, um, you know, for for things for people to certain do. So I have not been able to watch any of the freaking fundraiser, which I'm kind of sad. Maybe I'll be able to watch a little bit of it tonight. And then also, I was playing. Um, uh, we did a I, in my stream this week. We did a lot of Xbox because a lot of my viewers were off from work. Uh, this you know partial of the week due to the 4th of July I honestly right. I really I don't know is 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 
Fourth of July is something you celebrate like heavenly. Are you like big and hype about Fourth of July? I mean, as far as like not respecting it, of course I respect everything that somebody's done for our country as far as the servicemen and stuff like that. But I mean, are you big into it as far as like the whole fireworks and going out and seeing the fireworks? Is is that is that your kind of I thing? I used to be so. Um, you probably know this, but I'll kind of let the general audience know. Back in the day, we grew up in Shirts, Texas. Yes, yes. And Shirts used to have what's called the Shirts Jubilee. Jubilee, yep. Yeah, so, you know, there was a time where I would get a bunch of phone calls from people or people walk up to me, hey, you go into the 4th, because we all just called it the 4th. That, that's, that was kind of our code day for it. You go into the 4th, and we're like, yeah, we're going to go to the 4th, you know? So that used to be a thing. We would just show up. There would be music and uh, all kinds of craziness. We bump into people we haven't seen since like school or whatever because it was you know in between you know school because it's the summertime. So like, oh, we haven't seen you in, like what a month or two, kind of a thing, you know? Yeah, for real. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, What's up, you know, guy and... named Nemo? Long time no CG. How you be, man? I haven't seen you in forever. But yeah, definitely, man. Like. Uh, though that used to be hype though just because you know like i said we got the chill watch the fireworks through the carnival like we just we just had a blast you know but i did eventually grow out of it uh, yeah me i would too. say once i got out of high school i think i just stopped caring you know uh now i used to live on the main street so the parade used to walk through my street like yeah it would be chilling in my yard so you know i'll be outside chilling every now and then too meeting random people and you know, and it was a lot of fun and whatnot, but I did eventually grow out of the whole celebrating part of it. Uh, now, for me, it's just another day or it's a day I get paid for not having to work. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. that's kind of what that is. Uh, yeah, I, now don't get me wrong. I was the same way. And I, I think me and you used to go together a lot or we used to beat we up. We went off and on, yeah. Yeah, I remember the one time that the parade was happening. Well, me, me and Chris were actually walking to your house, mm -hmm. and we, we, we weren't paying attention to the parade, and uh, we actually walked through the parade, and they thought me and Chris were part of the parade and kept giving me and Chris water, <laughs> so it was pretty cool. He, says, yeah, been he said, been writing a business plan, uh, thinking of business ideas. Well, hey, if there's any way... You can figure it out, maybe sponsor and streamers, man. But yeah, well, that would that would be awesome, man. I'm the man. Um, speaking of Nemo, man, it's good to see you though, bro. I'm actually been playing a lot of GBs, man. Me and this one guy on the Xbox, we're like in the top 100 in GBs right now in Call of Duty. Uh, it was pretty awesome. We were in the top 30s, but we don't play. We don't play a lot during the week. We only play like one day a week. So, like, during the days we don't play GBs, we kind of lose our rank. Um, but, to get back on what I was talking about. But, yeah, and, like, I don't know. Like, 4th of July in the Shirts Park, that was always when I made out with my ex-girlfriend, Monica. Because, you know, Monica mm -hmm. was all her. Monica was always working that one booth every year. So, yeah. I'd always run into Monica. And, somehow, it would always be, like, the summer fling thing. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was crazy. Uh, y'all don't want none of this, man. I've been wanting you on my team. What do you mean? I don't want to go against you. I've been trying to get you on my squad, but you're you're hardly ever on, bro. Um, but yeah. So I mean, it. I don't know. It just wasn't a thing that me and like we didn't go out and do the whole big fireworks thing. Me and the wife and the kid just sat at home and chilled. Um, and then the um the rest of the the week, um. I was streaming one day and I got over 41, no, 43 followers in one session. So nice. it was pretty crazy. It was so bad that um, one of my people I was playing with, they're like, bro, you're doing your following notifications so much I had to mute you. I'm like, bro, I got to keep the hype, bro. I can't help it. Can't help it. You just hit you up, bro. You, you always gone. I don't know when to hit you up. I don't ever see you on. I'll text you, though, next time. I still got your number. I'll text you. We're actually wanting a good, solid third person, man. Um, man. Um, so you, you would be ideal, bro. Um, we've been doing mainly 
I can't get the I can't get the PlayStation squad to get together, man. I don't know what it is. Even today, uh, I'll explain a little bit more in my week. Um, and today we did GBs. Um, right now on the day on the day of the tournament, we're like one in or not one of the tournament, but today on GBs we did one and two. Um, it was just mainly we we shouldn't have lost some of these games. We we weren't we weren't playing to our optim uh. Our optimate, our optimized self. So, um, you know, but me and me and Headshot, we took it as champs. Yeah, I know, I know. And so, we we were one and two today, but we're still in the top 100. So I think that's pretty good out of four four thousand five thousand people that were in the top um 100. Um, and I tried, I tried on PlayStation today. I played with this um, retired pro Call of Duty player in, in PlayStation. And I gotta be honest with you, we did, we did horrible. We, I, I tried to do, t I, you know, cause I couldn't get a solid 3v3 team. So I was like, you know what? I don't know, for some reason, I don't like doing 2v2s on Xbox. I mean, not on mm -hmm. Xbox, but on PlayStation. On Sony, yeah. but I was like, you know what? I can't seem to get a squad together on PlayStation, so I'll go ahead and do a two v two. No, we we lost every single game. Where I think on on the PlayStation side, we're like zero and five, zero and five. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I'm gonna just as of right now. I think I'm gonna just put the PlayStation GB team to rest right now, until until I can get like a solid foundation like where I have with Xbox, like. It's so solid. The dude knows when to be here, and and he knows when to be here, and he's like there, and he's ready to go. Um, he said, "I'll play, bro." That's what's up. So I don't know. We'll see what's going on, and then let's see what else has been happening. Really, um, you know, I just been. I did a ballsy move. I gotta. I gotta say this ballsy move that I did. So you know, I'm always looking a way to to come up like you know to to just better myself maybe better the stream you know and I'm always taking chances um, depends on the time it's always we always do GB's on Wednesdays GB's Wednesdays 10 a.m. Um, and we always start off Xbox because headshots always always on time always ready to go always warm um, he's hype about it um, but um, I, I'm always striving to do like different things and, and better things and so you know first thing I did I, I don't I don't have a, 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 a energy drink or a drink as a sponsor yet so the first thing I did is I looked up monster well monsters not really looking for anybody right so I hashed that whatever well one thing that popped up in on my search was rockstar energy drinks well, come to find out, Rockstar, Rockstar is looking for sponsorships for pe for people to sponsor. So I hit up I hit up Rockstar this week. Um, it's pretty ballsy because I'm not a I'm not a big streamer. Um, mm -hmm. You know I don't have a lot of numbers, but you know as I put in to my um, my email, you know it's not about the numbers. It's about the ethnic. It's about the dedication. It's about somebody that's willing to work hard. You know. And we're gonna see what happens. I mean, the same thing happened with me. With you know, a lot of people are like telling me the same thing with able gamers. They're like, well, you know, I don't know, bro. Like, you're no big. Sh this was back when I had 80, 84 followers. I had eighty four followers when I hit up able gamers. Eighty four followers when I hit up able gamers, and everybody's like, nah, bro. You know, it's not gonna work out. You know, blah blah blah. They're not gonna hit you up. And you know, look, well, I'm streaming for able gamers now. So you just never know. So I did a pretty ballsy move this week, and I hit him up, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting up for a response, and see what happens. So you never know. Your boy might be um, sponsored by Rockstar Energy. Nice. You That'd be know. cool, man. That'd be legit. That would be legit. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, eight to six. I'm at work, man. At ten. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's all good, man. I mean, maybe, maybe God will eventually work it out. But you know, right now we uh, we're doing it. Um, you know, he he plays with me at least until like twelve or one o'clock, and then I switch over to PlayStation. I try to give PlayStation a try, 
and right now it's just it's just not going but hopefully we'll get something going here eventually and soon I'm glad to see you here man always got love for you even though you know we haven't talked much don't be afraid to call me text me I still got your number you still saved under my contacts as Nemo <laughs> people are like wonder why do I got a fish name in my phone because a boy named Nemo uh, a guy named Nemo excuse me um, so yeah man that's just been pretty much my week man just you know getting the bot together and, and just doing GBs and and taking risks bro that's pretty much that's pretty much been it that's cool Ain't yeah wrong with that yeah so you want to go ahead and, and share us a little bit of news because I don't want to be the only one talking <laughs> you sure <laughs> yes I'm sure damn it all right fine twist my ankle okay. anyway <laughs> so a lot, about a few episodes ago, I had mentioned that I was going to start playing a Final Fantasy mobile game because it kind of felt weird that, you know, I'm all hype about Final Fantasy. I'm hype about mobile games, but I'm not doing the, the combination. So I spoiled that I was going to start playing Final Fantasy Brave Exodus. Well, I've decided to actually switch it up a bit. Uh, starting tomorrow, I'm actually going to download and play the newer version, which is Final Fantasy XV, A New Empire. Hmm. So, uh, some of you guys have probably seen commercials about it, because I've actually seen quite a bit of them just about everywhere. So, you might have heard of this already. Yes. But basically, what this game is, it's a strategy RPG. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sorry. Not a strategy RPG. It's more like an, a real, uh, an RTS, real-time strategy. Basically, you build up a base, and you get to either ally with other people or you get to attack other people you get to join guilds and it seems interesting you know that that the, the makers of final fantasy i'm not sure if it's the makers or if it's a third-party company i didn't really go into all the details but mm. uh, whoever made the game decided to do something different and turn it into an rts as opposed to an rpg so, so but, i'm, I'm but, really just but, really curious to see what it's going to be like but let, let's get it let's get, let's get it clear do i want to play some pubs i'm always down to play with um pubs uh, while we're waiting for matches in fact i was going off earlier today um Let's be clear, though. This is not Final Fantasy's first um, RTS, though. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, it is. They've I never thought, done a real-time I, strategy. They've I, done a, uh, they've done what's, they, there's two different things. You're thinking of a strategy RPG. I'm thinking but, of uh, Chron uh, Chronicles. You're thinking of... Or Tactics. Uh, tactics, yeah. That's a strategy RPG, but this oh. is a real-time strategy in art. So, basically, for those who don't know the difference, a, 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 a real-time, an RTS is basically a game like Command and Conquer where you build a base and you have to more or less destroy others' bases, things like that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but a... I don't know. I'm not getting the terms all mixed up now because it's all confusing. <laughs> but, it is confusing, but you got to bring it I know. up. Because but I but a strategy was... RPG is basically an RPG based grid format, like, for example, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Fire Emblem. Those kind of games are considered strategy RPGs. Oh. Uh, but, but yeah, real time strategy is more of your war type games. And that's what Final Fantasy 15's version is. It's more, it's kind of a war based kind of thing where you actually uh, build up stuff. You, you have to build up things to mine resources so that you can build up your people better. And either, like I said, you can join a guild, you can partner up with just other bases, or you can just attack random people's bases. And from I did watch a few videos to kind of get an idea of what it's like when people think about it. And so far, people have been saying a lot of good things about it. From uh, I'm actually a little bit surprised because a lot of people hate on a lot of Final Fantasy spinoff type stuff. But this seems to be getting a lot of praise. So a, lot, I'm gonna... a, lot of, a lot of people hate on everything these days. Um, that's true a lot of a lot of hater in the world today yeah i know i'm, I'm actually gonna get into that actually a little bit later but go ahead yeah but uh i mean so you you're gonna try the game tomorrow correct tomorrow yeah I, I'm, gonna, I'm actually off tomorrow I, I mean i got things to do but when i'm done with my morning stuff i'm gonna actually download the game and i'm gonna check it out and I, I might do this either before or after i make my other videos but i'm but i'm not gonna record me playing yet i'm gonna actually like 
try to learn the game and figure oh, it yeah. out so that I can actually help people. Uh, so maybe in the future, that might be my newest game that I'll start making videos about. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, you know, Final Fantasy 15 is like a really, really good you know, Final Fantasy in general, I figure why not try the mobile game version out of it? You know what it's I mean? It's really so. interesting that they, they, they're making it, that they made a mobile game version of it, but I guess why not try to get all the milk out of the cow, I guess, right? Well, it's kind of smart because mobile gaming is honestly where it's yeah, at as yeah, far I mean, as, like, yeah. making money. Like, all those microtransactions, I mean, that, that, that's strong. That's you know where microtransactions are okay. Apparently, they're not okay with console games. I still don't... <laughs> I. I still don't understand the difference. I don't understand why people hate on microtransactions on console games, but they they love microtransactions on 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 mobile games. Mobile games. It makes no sense. And Nemo, I'm doing the podcast live, brother, so I'm not gonna accept your party invite right now, and I'm not gonna accept your game invite right now. Um, my Xbox is on because I was watching TV on it before the podcast. It's where I brush up. I literally watch videos all the way up to the podcast. So I'm like, my mind is like fresh on it. So like I know exactly what I want to talk about and how I want to do it. So that's why the Xbox is on. I am not playing games until um, the podcast is over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm doing the podcast right now, bro. Um, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but uh, definitely... Um, so go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Uh, I mean, as far as that game, I mean, that's more or less the gist of it. I'm just going to try it and uh, hope it's as good as I think it is. Hope it's as good as everybody's saying that it is and kind of go from there. You know, hopefully we'll make some videos of it. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, some more uh, mobile gaming news. Duel Links, the game that you used to play, but you haven't had time lately because of personal situations. Right. Um, they made a really, really cool update. Now, before I talk about the update, there's one thing about this game that no other mobile game does, or if they do, they probably don't do it right. Mm. So this game, you know, has surveys. They actually ask you questions at right. the end of certain events mm, right. to get your feedback. I've done a few now, of those. Here's the interesting part. They actually listen. So apparently a lot of people were complaining about the arena, the, the PVP, uh, where it doesn't feel like it's worth playing only really? because, you know, you don't really, the only time you get rewards, it feels like is when you reach certain ranks and then even the rewards you get for those ranks seem kind of lackluster. So they got to a point where once people reached certain ranks, they didn't play anymore because it was really, really difficult to get any further, and they were just getting annoyed, so they just stopped playing Arena. Hmm. So they actually had done, you know, uh, they didn't necessarily talk about it in the survey, but they asked some basic questions about it, and, hmm. you know, and they found that a lot of people were upset about it. So what they did was they changed the Arena format, the uh -oh. PvP. Uh -oh. So the way that it works now is you still get, you know, your you know, not a gems you get for reaching certain ranks. So that hasn't changed. However, right. they've added more rewards now. So basically for every uh, cumulative win, you get a prize. And cumulative meaning every, you know, once you reach X amount of wins in general, no matter what rank you are, once you hit so many wins, you get certain prizes. What are so these prizes? You, well, I mean, it's basically more gems, more oh. gold. You know, uh, they also give you tickets um, that'll help you to get cars you want to buy from the black market guy. Uh, huh. So we'll have like a rare ticket or an ultra rare ticket, huh. you know. So that's pretty legit. That I, is I legit. Like that. I, it but, gives people a reason to play. But I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't care about the rewards. Like, that's not why I played PvP. Um, I played PvP, and like you said, the only reason why I stopped playing is because I just I don't have time. Um, right. But the main reason why I played the, the the PvP was because of the competitive aspect of it. Like, I just, I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a competitive player. Like, you could give me a freaking coin for all I care, and I play it. Um, you know what I mean? Because, like, half the time I'd play PvP, like it wasn't about it wasn't about the rewards for me because I didn't think you know the rewards really mattered. It was all about going up the rank and just seeing right. how how high it can go. Other than right. that, I didn't care anything about anything else. 
So, I mean, I don't know. I find that interesting. I'm going to have to check it out now just because. Um, so, I'm definitely going to check it out. Do you do you enjoy it? I, I do. Um, now, of course, I've always liked PvP for the same reason you did. So, you know, it, for me, it's just an added bonus because right. now I get to get, you know, better cards faster. Right. But the the reason that they made this update, and it's not a bad update either, but the reason they did this is because they're trying to cater to the more casual gamer as well. Right. They don't want it just to be the hardcore super players to always win and dominate and nobody else get nothing. They want to give everybody a chance to get what they need so that they feel like they're doing something, they're accomplishing right. something. And yeah. I think that's good. I think you should be able to cater to the casual players as well. And that's why, that's one of the reasons that game is so successful is that they know how to cater to both sides, the competitive and the casual players. Right. You know, and they're very generous in their giving, which is kind of funny because we had a debate, well, two people had a debate in our Seven Nights Guild about, um, because Seven Nights is also one of those games that's very giving. Right. Uh, we lost you. Giving. Okay. That, like, newbies were, like, getting a lot of the good stuff so soon and things like that. And I'm like, well, it makes it to where they're more competitive so that they're not quitting because they suck. Right. You know, they, they can actually start off doing well, which makes them want to play more, which right. is the whole point. So, uh, no, I didn't have to say anything. Someone else more or less made the point for me. But, well, you know, that hopefully, was kind of the debate that hopefully, was going hopefully, on. Hopefully their, their words didn't get bleeded out. Or did y'all do this, like, in the, the Facebook chat? No, no, no. The Facebook uh, is on a different game. That's on Heroes Charge. Um, but, uh, but no, this was Seven Nights. It was actually just on it. Um, and it, that game still has an issue with certain words. I, I wish they would fix that because that's just ridiculous. Um, I mean, I get that. It's a game made, you know, in a different country, but, you know, it's really hard. Yeah, it's hard to have a conversation when you can't understand what they're saying because there's a bunch of asterisks everywhere. It's Definitely. it's freaking stupid. That's probably one of my two major complaints about the game. I'm not going to get into it because right. I'm going to make a mobile game review on it. So anyone that hear, wants to hear me bitch about it, you'll get to hear me bitch about it soon. Don't worry. Uh, awesome. Um, I, I, so um, Go ahead. My bad. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I think, I think this trolls into our trolls. It rolls into the question that we left the podcast with yesterday about mm -hmm. um, is is. You mean last week? Last week, yeah, last week. It feels like yesterday. Uh, last week, you know, is gaming really considered a sport? And and I want to add something to that. I feel like. I feel like it's good to cater to the um, casual gamer, but I feel like too much is a bad thing because it tends to water down the competitiveness of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like... There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Like, the whole reason why a lot of people play Call of Duty is not for the competitiveness. The only reason why a lot of people play the Call of Duty is because they're trying to get the guns that they want. They're trying to get the new swag. You know, like, the whole reason why people are playing Call of Duty right now is because they got double cryptos, double XP, double weapons XP. I mean, everything's doubled. Anything that can be leveled right now or anything that can be earned right now is doubled. I think the only thing that's not doubled right now is salvage points. So, are you really playing Call of Duty right now because of competitiveness? Or are you playing it because you're just trying to earn crap? And I just... That's where I feel like... You know, you know, it it sucks because sometimes it just gets oversaturated with people not really trying to play competitively. Now, to answer the question, do I feel that gaming should be a sport? By all means, yes, I should. Um, um, now, I feel like certain games shouldn't be a sport. Um, you know, I don't really necessarily know what games, but I don't feel like every game should have its own sport. Um, you know, but I mean, again, I feel like most of the games that are sports are the games that are like bringing in the most money nowadays, but I don't know. What, what do you feel? What do you feel? So I want to first kind of tackle, cause I decided to do my own personal research. So I, instead of talking to my gamer friends about it, cause we all know they're going to be biased. I went ahead and just talked to like some coworkers that uh, 
that I either that some were gamers and some weren't. And I asked them, I was like, do you think that, you know, what they're doing with the esports or video games, do you think video games could be a sport? And the majority of them actually said no. Um, but it did bring up a huge debate because it wasn't necessarily just video games that they were arguing. They were arguing a lot of sports that they didn't think was considered a sport. For example, a lot of people don't think golf is a sport. Really? A lot of people don't think pool is a sport. They don't think bowling is a sport. Really? Um, yeah, and their reasoning for this, and, and people were going back and forth because you know, a lot of people said, no, of course that's a sport. But a, the general gist that I'm getting from a lot of people is that people feel that a sport is a physical activity that uses the majority of your body, more or less. So something a little that has a little more contact, like football and basketball, uh, baseball, which baseball is kind of debatable using that definition. I was going to say, using the, well, <laughs> but, depends you know, on the game. The, the reason that people that people consider baseball a sport by default because it's considered America's pastime. So that's more of just a USA kind of staple right there. Um, but in all reality, it's not about how physical no. specifically that it is. Uh, and this is where it gets to my opinion. It, it's a matter of the level of comp- you know competitiveness, competitiveness you know yeah. is it you know is, do you have a crowd of people watching other people play this whether it be in person on TV on the internet do you have a crowd of people watching it are there major prize pools for it and I'm talking major like lots of money um, or you know new car things like that you know what I mean <laughs> like you know is it a big deal and Anything, and, and that's what I say that anything that has that kind of a, you know, a nature, competitive nature, is considered a sport. And this doesn't, I'm not I'm just talking about video games, I'm even talking about games like Magic the Gathering, uh, Texas Hold'em. These are also games that, even though they're sport. not very physical, um, the prize pools are freaking crazy. You can win millions of dollars playing either one if you're good enough. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there's lots of people watching. You know, it is televised to some degree, whether it's on TV or on the internet or whatever the case is. It's being shown somewhere. Sometimes even on Twitch. I was saying you know the majority mean? of stuff shown on Twitch now. Anything competitive, really, it's on Twitch pretty much. As far as video games. Yeah, as far as video yeah. games, yeah. Um, so, but yes, uh, as far as video games specifically, it is a sport and not because it has a little bit of physical dust, but because it's competitive and it has a major prize pool. But, I, but here's the thing. I think video games have a lot of physical aspects to it. Um, you know, after a five hour gaming session, I'm tired. Um, especially streaming. I'm tired. I'm tired right now. I'm tired. I mean, I'm not like worn out, like oh my Jesus, tired, but I'm I'm tired, you know. Um, there's a like people don't realize your brain is physically working when you're thinking. Uh, you know, your brain just doesn't just just work automatically. There's a lot of physical aspects to it. Your eyes are working. Your eyes get tired of staring at a screen all day. I mean, this is why they tell you. This is exactly why they tell you um, to, um, what you call it, this is why they tell you to wear certain glasses and everything, because you're, you can't, because, like, if you um, game for long periods of time, and you're not wearing the right, it cause cause damage (laughs) to your eyes, so, just like any other sport, you gotta wear protection, so I don't know. I feel that it's just a a lot of of people like being like biased, or they feel like because those cause those are the kind of people that feel like gaming's too easy. Like you know, just like anybody. Like I I deal with a lot of you know people right now that that say you know they sit there and say, well you know what, Handy. Uh, you know, and this is like you know people, family members. You know, streaming's easy. I could do what you do. It's easy. And I could probably do it better than you. You do, and I, you know what I tell them? I say, you know mm-hmm. what? Then do it. Then what's your yeah. excuse for not doing Put it? Put your money where your mouth then, is. Yeah, then do it. If you could do it better than me, then go ahead and do it. I don't do it because I think I'm the best. I don't do it because I feel like I can. I mean, be the best. Of course, I feel like I could be the best of 
what I am of who of myself. I feel like I could be the best of myself, uh, the best version of myself. I'm not trying to be any other streamer. I'm not trying to be a competitive streamer as far as like trying to be better than, you know, uh, Dr. Disrespect. You know, I feel like I feel like everybody's their own person, so how could you really compete with anybody else? Like, there's no, there's no category of streamers. Like, it's not like, there's no leaderboards, there's no nothing to say, well, you're the best streamer. I feel like you should always just be the best version of yourself as that you can be. And, you know, I don't know. And that's why I always tell people, well, you feel like you can do it better than me, go ahead. Because you'll just be helping Twitch out and you'll be helping me out. So go ahead. Um, you know, now... Do I feel that certain sports should be sport or now do I agree with what they said about, you know, sports have to be physical to be a sport, to be a successful sport? That's wrong because as much as I love hockey and as much as I love to watch hockey, hockey's not where it used to be when me and you were kids. Hockey used to be a main thing, used to be on 29 used to have like what I'm what I mean by on 29 I mean on Fox used to have like all this hypeness and you know and hockey struggled and I don't care what anybody says hockey is one of the most physical sports out there today um, you know you have to skate you have to do all these things so you know that's irrelevant um, you know I think that like I said I just feel like it's just people just jealous of the of the fact that they feel like make doing video games as a sport is easy money. It's not easy money. Let me tell you. Um, and any programmer will tell you it's not easy money. Um, no, it's not. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of practicing. I mean, you're coming from a guy who, again, used to play card games competitively. We used to get together two or three days a week or mm -hmm. more. You know, just constantly playing against each other, trying out different things, you know, kind of discussing what's better than what, uh, doing research on the Internet to see what's winning at the time, mm -hmm. how to beat it. I mean, there there is a lot that it takes. As, uh, it, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, it does, of course, take up money because you have to go to these things. You have to buy whatever you need to prepare for it. it. It's a lot. It's not easy. It really is. And then, of course, actually playing in the event against other people who are just as good as you, if not better. It's not easy. It really isn't. No. It's fun, but it's not easy. Yeah, it's fun, but it's not easy. And I remember it was the same way when we were practicing for the Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. You know, yeah. um, you know, we would always go to your house and we would practice and we would practice and we would help each other out. You know, um, yep. any way that we could to make sure that we could compete. Um, right. Unfortunately, I think the only two that really could, could well, only three that could, cause I think Matt was able to compete at that time really well. I don't remember how much Matt played. Um, there was a third member. I don't remember. I know Chris didn't play. Tim didn't really play that much. But I it, was remember, Philip. it was Philip. Okay. So yeah. it was me, you, and Philip. And, you know, out of the two, me and you were always winning the tournaments at that point in time. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it took a lot of dedication and a lot of work. Um, yep. th that, go that goes next to my uh, next story. Um, I'm going to pronounce this name wrong. Um, I already know it. But you guys know that are in the Call of Duty community and know, and this goes along with what we're talking about, you know, esports and, and the pro league and everything. Um, one of the phase members got traded to EU. Uh, Claymeister, Claymeister, uh, can't remember the name, um, but he got traded to the EU team. Um, a lot of people are in an uproar. Oh, I can't believe you traded him, and I, I know I'm a week behind. But here, here, here's why I'm a week behind because I wanted to make sure that I'm not just getting a biased opinion because to be honest i'm not i like phase phase is cool phase rain you're cool um phase aspect um apex you're cool like i have no problem with you guys but you guys are just not my favorite team i'm i'm mean green all the way man i'm optic all the way and so when i heard about it i was like huh huh because i remembered him from optic i didn't even know he was in phase at, at the time and one of my actual my my teammate he actually um 
told me about it, and I, I looked at the video, and I gotta say, and I watched both sides, okay, I watched the video from, um, from, uh, Claymaster, and I watched one of the, I watched the video from one of the phase members, now, here, here's the funny thing, here's the funny thing, that I thought was hilarious, the one guy that got traded was all about talking about the situation, and how he felt about the situation. And then the guys that traded him, they said, um, at this time, we don't want to talk about the, the boring details on why we traded him. But we know we, 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 we like them both. We, they're both good, respectable teams. And we wish them both the great, you know, uh, we wish them both the best because we're all still friends. So... I just felt like they didn't want to own up to anything that he was saying or, you know, I don't know. I just, I just felt, I don't know, because the way that I, I would have done it, if somebody made something about me or about why I got traded or why I traded somebody and I'm kind of like the head of the, well, not the head of the organization, but I'm like, kind of like, you know, can speak about the situation on why this happened. I think I would want to defend myself in some way or agree or disagree in one way and this person didn't disagree or didn't agree and I thought that to be kind of he weird. He didn't have an opinion it seemed like. No, he really didn't have an opinion. He just said, you know, uh, we're happy. We feel that it's best for both teams. So let me break down to you on why this person got traded. Okay. So apparently FaZe, you know, they just they get they they would place third in a lot of Call of Duty um, situations, and you know, and they were like, you know, even even the guy that got traded, you know, they said, you know, it's time we make a trade, and you know, um, we need to make a trade, we need to do something, you know, something needs to change. Not knowing that you know it was talking about him. Well, one of the players that became a free agent was like, well, hey. Um, I'll play. I'll, I'll join your team, but I don't want to play with such and such. Okay, and which is Clay, which is Clay Maester or whatever his name is, and they were like, "Well, no, blah blah blah." You know, how about for this guy? Well, okay. So first, he wasn't gonna get traded. Okay, first, this guy wasn't gonna get traded. They were like, "No, bro, don't worry about it. We're not gonna trade you." Blah blah blah, and then the next morning. He wakes up and he's being traded. That right there to me is pretty freaking shady. That to me is like saying, hey, you know what, bro? Hey, we got you. We got your back. You know what I'm saying? You are homie. And then you wake up and next day you're getting traded. Is that not shady? Am I, am I the oh, only yeah. one? That, you, would you not find that shady? I would find that shady. Um, and that's just the gist of it. I mean, if you guys want to go check out the rest of the video, go ahead and check out the rest of the video. But that's the key moment that I felt that it was shady to me. Um, I felt that it was pretty um, messed up. Um, you know, and I understand, like, there were issues, you know, with, you know, everybody and, you know, stuff like that. But why would you tell somebody that and then end up trading him? And then here's the funny thing, okay? I know you don't know a lot about Call of Duty much, but you know that everybody's talking about this next Call of Duty being the boots to ground. Boots to ground, meaning there's going to be no jetpacking, nothing. It's going to be back to normal, just walking on the ground Call of Duty. Okay. They traded their best boots to ground player. The best boots to ground player actually, supposedly, in the game right now. So why would you trade him right before the new game comes out? Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean... Something fishy. Something more to the story than wants to meet the eye. And now, now I'm not going to say that Clayster is a good, like, you know, a saint. Because here are two things that Clayster said to me, or not said to me, I asked. Make it seem like I interviewed the guy. I wish, I wish, <laughs> I wish we were on that level. I wish I could be like, hey, next week on the episode, um, we're gonna bring Clayster in, and he's gonna bring it, break it down for us. Um, maybe <laughs> one day. But the things that that caught my attention was 
he said, you know, I'm tired, you know, at the end of the day, he said he was happy to be traded, and, you know, he's he likes the team that he's going for, but the thing that caught my attention that he said, he said, hopefully I can stay with this team, because he's been on Optic, he's been on FaZe, uh, he's been on a couple other teams, and he says, I'm just tired of of building teams, making teams what they are, and them letting them letting me go. And here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. And and then I'm gonna let you speak on this, and somehow in your own way. Um. Clayster didn't make phase. Clayster didn't make optic. Okay. The people that made optic, you looking at formal scumpy. Um. Midnight, um, you know, and I'm I, I'm not even talking pro pro people all the way because we all know Midnight's not pro, okay. But Midnight, she's beast. Midnight, for those that don't know, live under a rock. Optic Midnight is is a female um, gamer. She's beast, okay. Um, and you got and you got Nate Shot, my boy Nate Shot, um. I say it like I know him personally. I, again, I don't know him personally, but these are just people that I, I know. And so when I think of when I think of optic, those are the people that I think of. I don't think of Claymeister. Claymeister wasn't around in the beginning. Same thing with Phase. When you think of Phase, you think Rain. You think Apex. You think um, what's the other? There's other couple guys that I can't think of right now. But those are the guys that built it. Those. Though on both those teams, though these guys are what made Optic what it is today. You know, yes, you have the old man of Optic, but when you think of Optic and you think of FaZe, you think of Nate Shot, you think of Scumpy. When you think of FaZe, you think of Rain, you think of Apex, you think of the trick shotting. Nowhere did Clayster make these teams what they are today. And so, I don't know, maybe, maybe he got, maybe he, maybe he got kicked off because of his cockiness. And his way of thinking, me, 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 kind of way. Because another thing was, too, that I found out is he couldn't get along. Or, well, he says in his video, he didn't get along with Nate Shot. He didn't get along with Nate Shot. And, but Nate Shot left anyway. So, why he brought that up is beyond me. But anyway, he didn't get along with Nate Shot. So, I, I feel like maybe the reason why he got traded, the way that he got traded, was maybe he just don't get along with people. And, that's where I have a problem, you know, because I'm the same way. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how your numbers is. If I don't give along with you and you don't follow direction and I know something, I'm not saying I'm a leader in Call of Duty because Lord knows I ain't no leader. But if I see something going on and you're just like, F you handy, like I'm going to go do my own thing, guess what? I ain't playing with you no more. We ain't going to play. Not not tournament. We'll play pubs. We'll play pubs all day long. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to play... Um, I'm not gonna play GBs with you, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna play tournament with you, because you're not you're not willing. You think your shit don't stink. Excuse my language, um, and you think that you're a one man army and you're gonna take it all down. That's not how it works. I don't know, but how do you feel, OG? So, being that I've I've never been on an official team, but I have been on an unofficial team as far as like the card gaming scene, where you know we had our crew. We shared our collection. We did our, you know, we did our trading, our selling, you know, as far as the team to go places to do big things. Um, even when a few team tournaments. Now, um, and even in video games too, we actually had a team because I was a Gears of War competitor at one time, the original Gears of War. Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, like you said, you guys got to get along. If you don't get along, you're not going to really be able to be a cohesive unit good enough to make things happen. Like, yeah, you'll win sometimes, but you're not going to be consistent. Uh, Wait, sorry. So, oh, Damn, I don't even know your name. Welcome to the Kill Cam Squad, where we chill and we kill and we have no drama. Sorry about that, man. Go ahead. Don't mean to no, cut you good. off. Go ahead. You're good. So, but yeah, I mean, honestly, there have been situations where people have had to get booted from the team for one reason or another. Now, from my experience, typically when, you know, something is done all of a sudden, 
That's there's usually something tricksy behind it. There's more behind the scenes, which is kind of how I feel about this situation. Mm-hmm. There's more behind the scenes than what's being said. It's just kind of, I think they came to an agreement to not say anything for one reason or another. So they just kind of let it be. Mm-hmm. And that's more or less how that's probably just going to be for now until one day there's a, you know, a documentary that actually tells the real story. Uh, so Behind the scenes of FaZe. Uh, and I well, you even... know that happens. There, there are actually a lot of YouTube documentaries on different gaming teams. Oh, I know. Uh, I, I, I know. You know, I, I watch so you, you'd be surprised, you know, what you find out about certain people. Definitely, definitely. And I, I didn't even drop the biggest bombshell yet. Are you ready? What's that? Even though this guy has been traded to EU, he still lives in the FaZe house. So, mm. but and yet they're all cool and stuff. Yeah, there's Ivy. something Stop. else about this. Oh, in your room. No, you're supposed to be taking a nap. Um, yeah, um, so, like, I don't know. Like, it's just crazy. Like... It was, I don't know, like, I don't understand, yet, you trade him, but yet, oh, and that's, that's what, and, and the face team is, the face guys is what said it, they're like, yeah, he still lives with us, we're all cool, we're all homies, but yet, you know, in the other room, he was talking about how, like, you guys said you weren't going to trade him, and then you traded him, now, regardless, I think, I think, and this is just a personal opinion, Again, personal opinion. Regardless of the situation, regardless of behind the scenes, if that's true, how FaZe did that, if they said they weren't going to trade him, and they then they trade him, that's bad business. Um, you should yeah, li- it is bad business. You should mm-hmm. at least own up and be man enough to say, you know what, bro? Yeah, we're trading you. We're going to trade you. We're probably going to trade you. If it changes, I don't care if the situation changed and you guys thought you weren't going to trade him. You should have been at least have been a man enough to say, you know what? If the situation changes where we're able to trade, we're going to trade you. Um, you know, I don't know. I just feel like at least grow, grow a pair of cojones and just say, hey, regardless, you, you on the trade block. You know what I mean? And I don't know. And I don't know. You know, I hope the best for EU. Um, like I said, I hope the best for both teams. Really, FaZe is not my uh, favorite team. Now, enough, now, and th- here's the funny thing. Everybody was all talking about how FaZe need to make a change. Faze, I'm glad FaZe made a change. But to be truthful, so does Optic. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I was very surprised that Optic lost these these games um you know as much fans as i am of optic i don't know i don't know I, personally i don't think there's anything wrong with the team uh what's up tox what's up toxic um personally i don't think there's anything wrong with the team i really think people are just tired of this call of duty to be honest and they just don't care even though there's a lot of money involved and there's a big situation of money and so you have to understand something about the call of duty teams there's actually um contracts involved there's actually um buyouts involved and all these things so i mean at some point you have to take it seriously but i just feel like they're at the point where like you know what let's just play have a good time we win we win we don't we don't let's just you know just do what they do and get ready for the next call of duty because i mean everybody's hyped for the next call of duty i hope for a um from a competitive standpoint the next call of duty does well um, I could care less about the pubs because, I mean, at the end of the day, in the pub standpoint, there's always going to be better connection issue. You know, somebody's always going to have the better connection or a laggy connection, and it's always going to cause problems. Um, but it, for a competitive standpoint, I hope that it really does well. Um, so I don't know. You know, I feel like that they just got tired and they were just, you know, ready to just get ready, get ready and get going to the next game. Now, is Optic gonna make changes? I don't know. I don't know. They're they're more of a people, more of a person 
that's willing to like stay to their guns unless somebody really wants to um, to make changes. And somebody brought it to my attention. What if Nate Shot came back? Now, granted. Nate Shot may come back, but I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, Nate Shot's not coming back to Optic. Nate Shot's trying to do his own thing. Nate Shot's trying to do the whole Hunter Thieves thing. Or he's trying to bump up his own brand, which if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. I don't see him coming back to Optic. If he does come back to Optic, that would be a very left ball curve in, in, in my field. And I'd be like, wow. I think he wants to do his own thing. Just because sometimes these people want to be a leader of their own thing. It's not necessarily because of of situations. It's sometimes people want to be in control. And Nayshot's probably in that point in his time and career where he wants to be in control of things. That's why he does what he wants to on his YouTube. You know, a lot of people hate on him because he does shoes now in his YouTube channel. Well, hey, when you got the money that he got, the endorsements that he got, when he got, you know, whatever he got... You could do whatever you want to do, and if that's what he wants to show out, you the thing the thing about YouTube and the thing about all this is you got to do what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about um, shoes, then let it be about shoes. He says I'm b I'm back. I was getting my GB account set up. All right, that's what's up, bro. Um, we'll have to get you on the team, man. I have to get you on the team. I have to get you on the team. I'm glad you're back, though. Appreciate it. Um, and the next thing I want to talk about. What's up, Philly Follette? I call him Philly Follette. That's not really his name, but it just sounds cool. What's up, Philly Follette? My boy. Um, it's weird. I get nicknames for people, for my regulars. Um, OG. Of course you do. It's, it's, it's just something. But um, the next thing I want to talk about, and it's, this is just rumor-based. Um, this is not factual. So, we know that the Super NES Classic came out, or is coming out. We know that the Super Ni or the regular Nintendo Classic came out, as far as, you know, for the retro stuff. Um, so, the next biggest thing for it to come out is the Nintendo 64. Do you think... Of course. Do you <laughs> think... Do you think it would come out, and what... What five games, what top five games would you think would be on the console? Well, if they were to do the N64 version of it, I would say Ocarina of Time, because that's probably one of the most hyped games on the entire N64, just period. Um, I would venture to say Smash Brothers. But that's kind of a maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, N64. What would they put on it? I mean, I would like to say GoldenEye, just because it's probably the most popular shooting game on the N64. I mean, it just kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, let's see, was that three or four? I don't even know. <laughs> that is, I, I think that's two. Two? Okay, that maybe three. That was, yeah, I think that was three. Yeah, uh, that's three. Because um, it was it was Smash Brothers, um, Golden Eye, and then a Rick, um, um, all credit of time. Probably Super Mario sixty four. Uh, yeah, I would say that'd be number one. Um, so that would be probably number two. Really, I think it would be you know all credit of time is probably the number one popular, followed by Mario sixty four. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. We got no, we got we got someone that made a comment. He said Super Mario, Goldeneye, Mario Kart, and Smash Bros. That's that would be. That. See, I don't know if Mario Kart will make it on the list. I don't think that would make it. Really? I think it's a great game. Really? I don't think it would make it. now. Do you know? Oh, um, excuse me, excuse me. I don't mean to cut you off, but do you know what someone said? Well, okay, so this is where I nipped this from, because you know, y'all know I get my material from somewhere. Um, they actually said Donkey Kong. Racing was superior to Mario Kart. To, to Mario Kart? Yes. I don't know about that. They feel, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all. Um, I did. talked to a lot of people, even from back in that time, and very few people even mentioned Econ Racing. 
Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't get behind that. What Mario Kart would be? He said Mario Kart would be probably my uh, be top two. Oh, hold on. Let Let's see what his other picks would be. Hold on. What would your other picks be? You have You have one more pick. I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what it would be. And this isn't my personal five, by the way. This is just what I think would come out. Um, I think we already did our personal five for 64 a few yeah. episodes back. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to think what other popular N64 game they would do. I'm trying to think what was really hype out of the Mario and Zelda franchises. Um, yeah, because there was a lot of Mario games back then yeah i mean that, that was pretty much like the majority of what was popular between paper that mario and, and, and yeah i'm not even really sure what the fifth one would be i mean it would just it would i'm sure if i actually did some research i'd be like oh of course that could, I, I i'll give i'll give you what your top five i would your fifth one would be because you're not thinking of it but i think donkey kong 64 would be one i disagree really i think that donkey kong country for a Super Nintendo was probably like the big deal, but I don't know that the 64 version has such a big follow up, so I don't know if I agree with that. But here's the thing, though, on this on the NES Classic, on the NES Classic, Donkey Kong got no love. Donkey Kong has not got no love, and if you think about it, Donkey Kong does not even doesn't even have a revel uh a rel a relevant game right now. Like Donkey, yeah, not anymore. Donkey Kong is gone. Uh, and he said Mortal Kombat. No, Mortal Kombat's third party. Mortal Kombat's third party. They wouldn't put. They wouldn't put um, third party games on there. Um, and to answer your question, Sega, we're talking about Nintendo keeps doing these like mini consoles. Like there's a mini Super Nintendo and mini regular Nintendo. So we're wondering what's the next mini that that Nintendo would come out with. Now I had a crazy I had a crazy hypothesis. Right? What if they did a mini GameCube that had a sixty four emulator on it? A GameCube with a sixty four emulator? Yeah. Why not? Why not just because think about it. You're not gonna. You're not gonna go. You're not gonna go mini sixty four and then mini GameCube. That just like you're gonna have to come. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna go the next mini, the next one is just gonna be like one all together. You know what I mean? Because they so both. You're talking like a GameCube N sixty four mix then, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I I didn't hear that from nobody else. That's just me personally. Now, um, but Sega. Sega is doing their own thing, and they're bringing all their games to mobile, and it's going to be called Sega Forever. Um, it's going to be coming out. Well, we talked about it last week. When did we say it was coming out? Yeah, we did. I, I can't don't, remember. I don't but... remember when it was coming out, but it's coming out, and all the games are going to be free unless you want no ads. You don't want no ads. It's going to pay a dollar. And Follett, don't worry. I did hear what you said. You won a contest on Facebook. Congratulations. I didn't get to read exactly what you won, but congratulations on your win. Um, but he said it would have to be perks, Mortal Kombat, and Zelda. Well, I don't know. I I think I think they would do a combined. I think they would do a combined. I think what we would see is I would see number one would be more Mario sixty four. Um, somebody said Yoshi's Story. I don't see. That. I doubt it. I. D- <laughs> I I thought that game was dumb. Okay, um, I would think maybe maybe Star Fox maybe Star Fox sixty four. So Star Fox sixty four. See, I thought of that, but I don't think it was very. I don't know how popular it was. I know it got a lot of hype from like you know Nintendo and Game Informer and Nintendo Power and all that, but. I don't know how the general population received it, so I'm not sure if that would be on the list. I mean, yeah. it definitely would be my top five, but I don't know about the general. I I don't I don't know if it, I don't know if Nintendo would put it on there too, considering that the Super NES is going to have Star Fox Two, the unreleased Star Fox Two. 
And he said, "What about Boom uh Bomb Man, Bomber Man?" That was a that was a cool game. Yeah, actually, that's a possibility. I could get behind that. Uh, Bomber Man is one of those games that was kind of left field, but that was actually popular. I, I when I've talked a lot to about the N sixty four, that is a game that does get brought up. So that's a good fifth. I would actually probably pick that as their potential fifth. You would good think pick. I like good that. good pick. Now I think it's a good pick. You, now here's the question. You don't think none of the Mario parties would make it? Like, oh, heck cause, no. Because you they, they you know they do like a hundred games or like two hundred games. So you don't think you don't think Mario? Party oh, okay. So you're okay because you're not you because I thought we were going top five. Okay. No, 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 no. But because uh, oh, okay. we, we're we talking can't... in general, um, then oh god, yeah, lots of games we put out there. Oh, well, yeah, but I'm just saying, our we would say our top five that we'd want to see on there because we, of course, we can't go through a whole list of like a hundred games. Of what right. we'd want to see on there. <laughs> you know what game I would love to see on there, but it probably would not get a light of day. Mm. Win back. I love that game. You know, that <laughs> game was pretty cool for its time. And honestly, people give it a lot of crap. And, and it's funny because I about a, maybe a year ago, I watched a speed run of it and I watched a let's play of it, uh, which I was, I, which I, I thought both were really, really interesting, but the reason that Wimbag gets a lot of crap is the acting is kind of cliche and kind of like off. You know, you know how people say, oh no, here it is, kind of a thing, you know, just that yeah. weird overacting that doesn't work. There's a lot of that in that game. Yeah. Um, but the actual like oh, no. combat was fantastic. The mechanics were amazing. In fact, um, What's that game? The Division? Um, the, the Tom Clancy Division? Mm-hmm. Has a lot of those same mechanics in that game. So, every time I play Division, which was only during the beta time, I always thought of win back. In mm-hmm. fact, it made me want to play win back more than the Division. I was wanting to go back to win back than play the current game. And, you know, of course, Division has all these cool graphics, whatever, whatever the case. I don't know. I just I enjoyed the multiplayer aspect of it. I enjoyed the over the shoulder. There was a lot of things I enjoyed about that game. Um, and I, it really I thought the one player was solid. I, I really thought the you know actual doing the missions and stuff was great. You know, having to you know shoot out the trip wires and you know figure out the puzzles to get here and there. Uh, when you finally got interesting weapons, how awesome it was. You know, and I thought the story was actually kind of interesting i don't remember the story because i just remember playing multiplayer at your house like uh, and i guess it's not gonna be a major spoiler because many many years later <laughs> yeah near the beginning of the game like your entire party is more or less kicked off this plane because of something that happened in quotation marks and everybody's gone and as you and your in your team is doing adventure, you start running across people who end up getting killed over and over and over. Like, you lose almost your entire team. Well, it turns out at the end of the... near the end of the game, you find out that your squad leader was the one who actually caused the whole problem. Oh, uh, so, crap. you know, it, they made it look like he had died and someone was out there and all this other stuff as they were building up the story. Just to find out at the end that it was actually your leader who messed everything up to begin with working for uh, the other side. So I thought the story was actually pretty cool. It had some interesting plot twists. I mean, it was actually a really solid game outside of its acting. And, you know, like you said, being able to like kind of. Like that, and, and being able to crouch down and stuff and crawl and, and all that the stuff. Crawl to cover. First time. Yeah. The crawl to cover and all that, the way you would do it. Like, that was oh, yeah. it was dope. And the fact that you could do it, it was the only game, in my opinion, and I, I'm taking a big leap here. I'm taking a big leap. Okay. It's the only game, in my opinion, that you can play the one-player mode as far as the mechanics go and nothing get lost in multiplayer mode as far as mechanics go. Anywhere mm. else, any even games today, you play the one-player mode, you play the story mode, 
and then you go and you have all these cool mechanics, all these cool things, and then you jump into multiplayer, and a lot of it's watered down, or you just lose, you lose some of it, you lose some of the substance of it, or you just don't have it at all. When back, it was exactly like you were playing the story mode as far as mechanic wise, mm-hmm. but you were just playing against um, your friends. That I liked. Yeah, I, uh, it was I, it was basically consistent uh, on both sides. You you didn't have to worry about I have to play a certain way on this mode, but in that mode, it was all the same, and it made it simple. I liked it. I agree. Yeah, and I and to this day, there's games don't do that, and I feel like I said I think it's the biggest. It's a big leap, but I feel like Win Back is the only game to ever do that. Yeah, it's actually so pretty solid for its time. Like if you were to play it now. You, you know, it might not be as glorious as it once was, but, like, that game was really, really good for its time and didn't get near the prize that it should because it got overshadowed by games like, like Perfect Dark and, and, and all Perfect that. Dark. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So those games more or less outclassed it, and everyone was so focused on those that went back didn't get the attention it deserved. But it was a really, really solid in 64 mm-hmm. game, and I'm glad you brought that up because... You know, I like I said about a year ago. I just happened to see if I could find a speed run of it. And I did. That was one of the coolest things I ever saw. Nemo so. said. Nemo said, "What about the game Wario?" Now I never played Wario. I never. Played I Wario. never did either. Actually, I, I can't say that I ever did anything. I didn't about. understand. I didn't understand. Here's the thing. I didn't understand why Wario was brought in the mix. Why is Wario brought in the mix? Is because he was the Game Boy games. That's why he was like the Game Boy version of Koopa, so to speak. It's like is Wario supposed to be like? He's like a bad guy. I know he's like a bad guy, but is he like Luigi's evil uncle? Or he's not like of any kind of relative. He's just someone else in general. Okay, because like, he, he reminds just... me. He looks like he reminds me of like a relative of somebody like. I don't know. Like, I just what I, I mean, care. they look alike, but they're not related. Okay. He's just like a, the Game Boy, like doppelganger of Mario, so to speak. If he was evil. Uh, oh, sp- speaking of which, and I'm gonna go off totally off subject, but I want to mention this before we go and stuff. And then I got I got a question after that to go back to the 64. But I forgot. I totally forgot. So. I did something crazy this week, Mm -hmm. and what reminded me of it is because the person I played against, his name is Wario. Um, It's actually my my wife's cousin's boyfriend. Uh, Mm -hmm. I talked. Well, I didn't talk to him. He asked me. He said, "Should I get a PlayStation or should I get an Xbox One?" Surprisingly, I told him get a PlayStation. So he went out and got a PlayStation Four, and Mm -hmm. we've been playing the PlayStation Four. Well, he has Madden. Well. He's like, you need to play me on Madden one day. And I was like, well, I don't have Madden. Well, just so happenly enough, this week, they had Madden on sale on the PlayStation 4 for 9 bucks. Oh, wow. So I went and bought Madden. Like the newest Madden? The newest Madden. The newest Madden. Oh, wow. The new Madden 17 for $9. Huh. So I bought it for $9. Now, why not? Why not? I mean, it's 9 bucks. Um, I got to tell you. I picked it up, and it was like I never left Madden. I lost by three points, but that's only because of bad clock management. This dude was freaking out. He was like, I thought you haven't played Madden in 10 years. You're playing like a freaking pro. And I was like, dude, I haven't. I haven't touched Madden in like 10 years. Uh, dude. I wish would have done the Madden challenge. <laughs> dude, yeah, I know. I got six picks on this guy. Six oh wow! User picks, bro, not computer picks. User. But well, you picks. actually did it. I actually okay, did nice. it. I haven't. I've maybe played one game, one um, one like simulation game, like where just me versus the computer, and that was it. He was like, "Are you gonna have to practice or anything?" I was like, "Nope." I was like, "If you beat me, I just want you to beat me straight up." And the only reason why I lost was bad clock management. Only reason why I lost, mm. and he actually towards the end. He he got a good drive and kicked the field goal, and I lost. And the reason wow. why that reminded me of that game was because his name is like Wario something something something. So ah. that reminded me. That reminded me of that. And I was like, oh snap! 
Um, but yeah, so if you if you want to go get Madden, Madden's still on sale. Madden's on sale for nine bucks. You might as well pick it up. It's only nine bucks. Um, and, but it's really it's like I never left Madden ever, ever. Mm-hmm. It's really crazy, and the grass moves. I just want to throw that in there. Of course it does. <laughs> okay. The flow of the grass is just so optimal. <laughs> so, the question that I want to leave you with, and I want to leave everybody with, and we're going to answer the question, because I want to hear your answer to the question. <sighs> what is the worst Nintendo 64 game ever made? Quest 64? Quest 64. Well, yeah, man. it was that one player RPG that was just complete total garbage. <laughs> okay, and like, why? Why was it, it was just First and foremost, I don't believe that an RPG should only have one main character. Uh so it so it was fundamentally flawed at the beginning. Okay. With just that aspect. You couldn't get other characters. There was no you get someone eventually they leave and you get another person like some of the Final Fantasy thirteen spin offs. It was literally just one person the entire time learning abilities, doing this and this and that. And that completely turned me off. Not a fan. Um, So, yeah, no, horrible. Uh, The actual gameplay mechanics didn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't remember all the details because it's been so many years. I just remember... (laughs) <laughs> I remember renting the game over and over only because I just wanted to beat it. I, I, I was hoping and praying that the game would eventually become good and it sucked. Like, <laughs> it, it, I, I can't just, uh life. Okay, anyway. so, so a guy named Nemo says, and that's actually his name, a guy named Nemo says Jurassic Park was the worst game ever made. Actually, I did play that. That game was trash, too. That game trash was trash. Bucket. Trash bucket, really? Yeah, but there's ah. a a friend of mine who has who coined that phrase, so I was stealing it from him. Oh. Uh-huh. but ah. yeah, no, that game was garbage too. I played the mobile version. I still can't believe they make this game, but yeah, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, that game was pretty bad too. I don't I don't have the the horrible memories like I do with Quest sixty four, but yeah, that game is on the garbage uh. list too. Totally what, agree. What was my okay? Now a lot of people are gonna disagree with me. Because this was actually on the list of like the most requested games, probably going to be on the classic, uh, the 64 mini. Now, mind you, I don't think they're going to make a Nintendo 64 mini because the fact that you can still buy Nintendo 64s and Nintendo 64s are like freaking like tanks, you can't break them. Um, I don't see the purpose of it, but. I thought the worst game Nintendo 64 ever made was Wave 64. Hello? Wave 64? Hello? Wait, say it again? Wave 64. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> you're not, okay, the one where you get on the jet ski and you're just like... Oh, Wave Race or whatever? It's yeah, called. Wave, it's yeah. Like, there's more to it. It's not just Wave, but I think I know what you're talking about. Okay. It was a game that was uh, really, really overhyped, I think, because I used to, when I used to spend the Nintendo Power, they used to send us VHS tapes advertising some of the games. I think Wave Race was one of those games, and I wasn't really a fan of it either. Uh, and see, and then, and then he's like, man, he saw Wave Race was fun. Dude, it was only fun because it was the first game that you could ever like really like just jump in the waves and do whatever. But I tell you this. My mom, when she bought me a Nintendo 64, brand new, that was the game that came with my Nintendo 64. I was sad. I was sad. I didn't play my 64 for a month because I thought that game was trash. I said, I don't want to be running and rolling around on a damn jet ski playing with a damn dolphin. And I'm, I at that time... My neighbor had a PlayStation, um, and he had Need for Speed. He had the first High Need for Speed. No, not Need for Speed High Stakes, although that was a great game. That's probably my most ultimate game, um, my most all-time game. Um, it was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, the very first one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, 
I was over there playing his stuff, and I was playing the demo disc because back then, when that was when PlayStation Underground had a disc that came with the magazine, that. and you get to play all them demos. And we played Twisted Metal. Man, I was playing that. I wasn't. I wasn't into my sixty four, like really until um, this person showed me Goldeneye, and uh, and I mean by this person I mean OG. Um, Perfect Dark and all that stuff. That's when I got into first person mm-hmm. shooters. I didn't get into first person shooters with PlayStation. Nintendo. That's why I always have love for Nintendo because if it wasn't for Nintendo, I wouldn't be into Call of Duty right now. Um, you know. Um, but I still feel like Wave sixty four was like the worst game cre- ever created. Okay, man, go play Jurassic Park, and then come back to me. <laughs> I will never play Jurassic Park. I, I think that's a dumb game. I think that's a dumb game ge- in general. Like, why would you want to be... Like, even the mobile game was about making a freaking dinosaur park. Uh, why, why do I want to make a dinosaur park? Why? Help me. So I'd rather play... If we're going to go, like, old school, I'd rather play Lion King. You know what I'm saying? The Lion <laughs> King or Gargoyles or something like that. Um, I don't know. So... D- well, go ahead. I was going to say Wave Race. I wouldn't put it like the bottom of the trash. Like, it was it, Wave Race was one of those games where I was okay with it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. Like, it wasn't a game that I would ever brag about. But I don't know if I would really put it in the garbage pile, so to speak. Mm. It's just not one of my favorites. That's all. Mm. Uh, I appreciate it for what it was. And that's really all it really boils down to. And I would I would say what's the most underrated game, but I think, think me and you already said that already, and that's underrated was Winback. Um, I feel like Winback was really underrated. Um, Winback. Yeah, uh, it was underrated. You're absolutely right. Winback deserves a lot more credit than that it's actually ever gotten. And if you have never played Winback, go play Winback. Go play Winback, and then go play. Um, go play Tom Clancy's Division, and you'd be like, "What?" <laughs> you'd be like, "What?" Toy Soldier, I think. Toy Soldier, I think it was called. Uh, dude, I know. Dude, Toy Soldier was cool. Um, I used to play. Or what was it? Army Man 3D. Army oh, Man 3D. Army Man 3D was dope. And then, uh, oh, that's Sega though. I was gonna go General Chaos. But that's what me, and, <laughs> uh, me and Chris used to play all the time, General Chaos. But yeah, Army Man 3D was dope. Um, what was another good game? Man, you gonna make me want to go out and buy a freaking 64? 64 and GameCube were like my two favorite Nintendo systems, um, by far. I don't know. I think I like this uh, the GameCube more because of the wrestling games. Although, um, WrestleMania 2000 and uh, WCW Thunder was actually really good games too for the 64. Um, I mean, you, you never played those games, huh? Not really. Oh, you remember Paul Disharoom? Yeah. He played those games. He secretly had us created and he would beat us up. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> uh, he, he was a weird, he was a weird kid, man. But uh, Yeah, I remember. He was, yeah, I know. <laughs> definitely. And, okay, so... Mind you, and I want to say this one thing. Back to our sport situation. If if physical was the actual definition of sport, then chess wouldn't be a sport. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. And I'm gonna leave it with that. Um, is there anything else that you want to speak on, Mr. OG? Um, actually, I kind of wanted to add to what you were saying, and you mentioned it, but I, I actually meant to mention it too. Was uh, as far as the whole. Uh, tea leaving team and stuff like that if you're really to the point to where you're just like burnt out on everybody that you're getting or, or following other people's leads become a leader yourself i actually that's what i actually do in mobile games uh and not necessarily for my sake but you know for my girlfriend too because you know she plays at a certain pace that not everyone agrees with so in, in an effort to make sure that she can enjoy 
in any mobile game that we play together, I create a guild myself so that we have control over how often we play and what we do without anyone giving us any crap or booting anybody. So, yeah, basically, if you want control, make your own team. It's as simple as that. That's you know, especially you if you have a good following because if people know who you are, there's probably people that want to join your team. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I, I totally agree. In fact, this guy named Nemo, actually, we were supposed to be making an esports team. But then I don't know what happened. Um, I mean, I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you are, are busy doing your thing and doing the whole business thing. More more power to you. But we were we were actually going to um, make an esports team. Oh, and here's a great thing to, to let you know too, Nemo. The guy that I'm that we are doing well in in GBs that we're in the top 100s on Xbox. He's also a believer in God. In fact, the reason why he's not watching the pad podcast right now, and the reason why he doesn't watch the podcast on Wednesdays, is because he's at church. So it's pretty cra- cool. it's pretty cool. He actually always comes and like listens to the podcast and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, for those that don't know me and, uh, me and Nemo, we were going to make a, um, esports team called the crew, which everybody knows already have the crew logo and the crew stuff. And the crew actually stood for Christ redeems us. Well, Nemo knows like the ins and outs and how to get things started. And that's what we were going to do. And, um, Necessarily because we knew that not necessarily we can get on an esports team. Uh, it's still in the air. Yeah, I know it's still in the air. Um, and uh, so we uh, we said, you know, we're just going to make our own. Well, you know, and we're just going to recruit people. Well, man, I tell you what, Nemo, they just been they just been coming to me automatically. And I think that's what God's setting up. I don't know necessarily what God's doing, but he's sending the right people. Um, you know, headshot is like by far like headshot. I- I'm gonna say this. Only thing, the only reason why I feel like a headshot could be a little bit better than you. Only reason why Nemo is because he plays more and he's more warmer than you are. Um, a little bit, a little bit better than you, man. He he's really really good, dude. I saw him go forty something in like two. Um, 40, what is it, 47 and 2. Um, and he did it with no variant. He did it with, he did it with a GB, he did it with a GB variant, uh, in a pub. Um, I've seen um, this dude, and it's just crazy. Like, God is, and I, I'm, I'm one of his favorite people to play with, um, in GBs. Um, out of everybody he plays with, he, he, he lets me know, like, I'm one of his favorite people. And it's just because we're cool. We're collective. We don't we don't yell at each other. We 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 try to lift each other up when you, when one person's down on each other. We don't we don't try to blame the another person. We're just like you know what we could do better. We got this. We're very positive. So yeah, I always agree with. Uh, I always agree. I definitely agree with you. Um, if you if you don't like the way things are run, then do it yourself. The only thing that I would suggest is that if you're new into something. And you want to do your own thing. Like say for instance. You just want to start your own guild. And something just because you just do. And. All of a sudden. like, But you don't know what you're stepping into. Join somebody else's. Pick their brain a little bit. And if you're not feeling it. Leave and start your own. Because you never know. You might learn something a little bit better. To make you get better with what you're wanting to do. And you can take that and make your own. Not saying copy. But you may not know how to run a guild. You may not know how to run an esports team. You may not know how to run a stream team. You may not know how to run these things. So you might have to join one first, pick the brain, understand how they run, and then say, you know what? Well, I like this. Well, I don't like this. So when I do mine, I'm not going to do this. When I do mine, I'm going to do this. And, you know, just do your own thing from there. Yeah, you definitely got to meet this man, man. You got to take off. You got to take off work like one Wednesday. And come grind with us, man. Because we actually want a third person, but we we would like a third. We would like a fourth person, but we just we need we need stable people. We need stable people, and are more like not hungry to win, but excited to play GBs. Um. So, be sure, man, to try to come check it out. Um, 
Is there anything else you would like to um, say there? No, nah, that pretty much sums it up for today. Yeah, I think it, um, I'm trying to remember, make sure. Oh, I do have one more thing I want to talk about. So, for those that don't know, uh, I have to see, man. If y'all did it, if y'all did it on Monday, right? I night I could. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I kind of like to stream it though, so I really don't stream Monday nights. But I've been talking about maybe doing like more GBs, like off stream, because that way we don't. Because we do really good. Like you don't understand, bro. Bro, we were ranked 38. We were ranked 38 in all GBs. In the in in the um, North American League Summer League, and uh, we kind of fell apart because we didn't fall apart, but we kind of fell back because we don't play it during the week. We only we only play one day a week, and we have one other guy, but the one other guy that plays with him can't play during the week. He only plays during the weekends. So, I mean, if we could all get together and just grind. Dude, I'm telling you, bro, we could we could do it. And I, I, I'm by far, I'm going to be real with you, I'm by far the weakest player on the team. But somehow, with all of us together, with our powers combined, Captain Planet. No, I'm just kidding. With our, with, nice. uh, with, <laughs> I had to throw it in there. With our, with, when, we, when we combine, it just works. It just really works. Um, mind you, I played like crap today. But the one thing I want to bring up, um, right now is um, there is a new Twitch app update. A lot of you people are not going to get it yet. A lot of people do get it. Um, so I'm going to show you. Well, not show you. I'm going to tell you how you can get it now um, when they don't roll it out right away because they're rolling it out uh, in like sections. So like not everybody's getting it at once. Now I say this update's worth it because. Now you don't need a third party to stream from your phone. You can pretty much stream right from your phone uh, with just a Twitch app by itself. Um, not only that, but it just moves a lot smoother. And not only that, but it, it recommends your channel to people that are not followed by you. So this is how I've been able to get a lot more followers um, is because of this update. Because a lot more people are seeing the channel, and sometimes they'll just hit the follow button, maybe come back later, what so forth and so forth. Um, so I like it. So if you do not have the Twitch update and you would like the Twitch update, you need to go to APK Mirror, and you need to make sure. Now I'm going to tell you. There's two versions, okay? Do not download the five point the 5.0.3 download the version 5.00 the newest version is the 5.03 but for some reason the 5.0.3 or whatever um, doesn't have the live broadcast option now if you are a person that's not maybe you know maybe a streamer and you're a viewer and you're not trying to um, broadcast then maybe Point three is good for you, but I'm a streamer, and even though I don't stream on from my phone, there might be that point in time in life where I'm be like, you know what, I might want to stream this from my phone. Like for instance, when we go to um, game, what is it? Games done live, correct? Oh, uh, video games live. Video games live, yes. Um, I'm gonna want to stream some of it live. Maybe not necessarily the concert, but maybe a little bit talk to you guys before. Um, you know the concert starts or whatever or maybe talk to you guys after or maybe you know and I'll be able to do that and then also OG you could also stream your mobile gaming from this app just thought I'd throw that out there um, mm -hmm. um, so if you want to get into the mobile gaming of streaming and blah 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 you can do that too um, not necessarily saying you would want to do that but I'm just saying it's out there so if you want to do that, make sure you download APK or go down to go to APK Mirror and download the newest update um, for Twitch. Like I said, you can be patient and wait. It's gonna come out. There's a lot more other things that are coming. Uh, there's a lot more other things that are on it, but those are the major things that stood out to me. And also, 
um, Nemo, I don't know if you know, but I finally got my sub button. And to let you know, um, Amazon Prime does work on my sub button. And to let you guys know, emotes are coming fat. Emotes are coming soon. Um, I'm just, it's just in the process right now, guys. It's in the process. Um, the first emote that you guys are going to see is um, the Oh My Jesus emote. Um, everybody's been requesting that emote. Everybody wants the Oh My Jesus. So Oh My Jesus is going to be first. Um, and then I got, I'm not going to tell y'all what the second one's going to be. I'm not going to tell y'all what the third one's going to be. Just know that Oh My Jesus is going to be the first one. Uh, to, to get the second one and the third one, you have to, you have to sub to a different tier. Uh, it's not my doing. It's Twitch's doing. It's the way Twitch works. Can't help it. Uh, the first tier, the first tier is the four ninety nine. The second tier is the nine ninety nine, and the third tier is a whopping twenty four ninety nine. Uh, again, that's not up to me. That's up to Twitch. So, you know, if 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 you guys choose to sub to me at the twenty four ninety nine, man, that's up to you guys. I don't. You know, even just the fact that you guys want to sub to me, just the fact that I got seven subs right now is a blessing. So, you know, I'm just more thankful and more blessed. And just know that there are emotes coming, and I appreciate all the love and the support. And with that, I think we'll end it out. So go ahead and take us out, Mr. OG. Go ahead. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another wonderful episode of the OG Podcast. This is OG Crunkster. Check me out on YouTube for all of my wonderful mobile gaming videos. And, of course, our boy Handy Kill Cam on Twitch running all those shoot 'em up games. Just knock you with a headshot. Be Bitch careful. pal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, of course, we'll be back again next week. We'll kind of hype up, you know, the event that we're going to that following weekend. And we'll have some more material for you. So look forward to it. Thanks for watching. Definitely, definitely. And make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure to know that I will be at the Able Gamers channel tomorrow morning playing that Overwatch co competitive. Um, depending on who's online, I may go Xbox or PlayStation 4. I haven't decided yet. It all depends. First come, first serve. Um, just remember, I'm going to be over at the Able Gamers channel. So, if you see me on my channel, it's not me on my channel. I'm hosting Able Gamers from my channel. And with that said, I'm Handy Kill Cam, and peace. Um. Uh, we're going to host uh, the SGDQ. Yes, So yes. right now they're doing the Mega Man X2 race with four different people. It's actually kind of hype right now. So definitely. you're actually coming in on something really cool right now, guys. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for sort of reminding me, good friend. <laughs> um, what's the what's the channel? You should just put up uh, Games Done Quick. And then it should be the very, like, first option. Oh, yeah. Game's done quick. Gotcha. All right, here we go in five. Actually, I may have to do this from the actual computer because the other day, today earlier, it wasn't working. In five, four, wait. Three, two, one. Let's see if it works. Yes, it's worked. It worked! Yay! Nice. It should have worked. Yes, it worked. Yep. Do I want to put this on auto host? Yeah, yes. It's on auto host now. So whenever it's on and I'm not on, it automatically appears on my channel. Uh, oh, cool. cool beans. Um, there you go, bro. Um, yeah, man. Um, so we're every we're we're still on for for the event, right? Nothing's changed. Oh yeah, yeah. I I just need to get the tickets printed. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow. That's gonna be one of the errands I'm gonna run. So, cause I already like I said, I already have the email and everything. I just gotta get them printed. With